So, I mean, who controls skateboarding? I mean, if someone was in charge of skateboarding, it would suck. I think no one's in charge. I think that's what's so rad about it. To build a skateboard brand, you have to really understand what skateboarding is about and like live in the gutters and accomplish something. And that's just the way that our industry works. When a skater starts a company, it's for the right reasons. It's organic. When it comes down to it, when you're a skate company, and skateboarding are your roots, you need to keep it skate, and that's where you're gonna end up growing the most. Skater-owned brands are like the lifeblood of skateboarding. I think they're sending a, a, a unique message to skateboarders and to shops and everything, and they're spreading that, that bond and that connection that we all have as skateboarders. We all have that common passion for the feeling of riding a skateboard. It doesn't mean it's going to be successful just because you've been in the trenches. Not necessarily, but you have a much better shot at it. I just think having somebody that knows skateboarding inside and out like is, is the best to, to run a company because you're going to have everything up to date. You're going to know what's in the now. Someone that doesn't skate doesn't know that. They're just trying to go off what they think is something that's going to get their brand far ahead. I'll try to come down here as often as I can just to get you know, a look on what's new, what these guys have brewing up and get my input. I'm actually here pretty early today. That's usually when I come in and kind of give them my ideas and see if they get to uh, get ran or not. I usually come through with a banger, top sellers only. Right now we're just checking out some of the holiday gear that's about to be coming out for our next season. We got everything lined up on the catalog and then we got a couple samples that came in. This is where Alvaro does the magic. Can't show you too much of his magic. <laughs> When I started Grizzly, I didn't realize that. I always thought skateboarding was my one thing. All I want to do is just put in work for the company, you know? Not necessarily retire from skateboarding, but like there are those days where I'm like, man, I kind of want to just go sit in the office and, and work. I'm working for a passion here and working for my brand, you know? It's just like skating. Like, I want to wake up today, I want to go to this spot and film this trick. Even though it's going to be hell and I'm going to have to put in all day to do it, I love it. Coming into work, I don't have to work a job. I've never worked a job in my life. But coming here and, and being able to sit down and handle stuff, it feels great. Right now we're in my garage slash on LA headquarters, I guess. This is my office. I got guard dogs, so I'm trying funny business. It's our hot sauce tea. It's our bearing company. Me and P-Rod started it. He's out skating and I'm pushing it. <laughs> when you start something like this, we didn't ask for investors or anything. We just put a little bit of money together, bought product, sold a little bit, made some money to buy more product, to sell more, open more accounts. You don't realize how much boxes cost? Supplies? Yeah. Tape? Tape is so fucking expensive. It is a lot, a lot of work. I could use help, because when I, you know, around noon I gotta go skate. 
and try to get something for the video part. Usually I'm like, I get burnt out pretty quick now doing this, but it's fun. I'm glad like we started it and we're growing something from the ground up. If you have like some big investor and they're like, hey, we want to create something out of nothing. And then that lasts about a year and then they pull all the money out, you know? I think that's kind of the bigger picture in skateboarding when you've started a skater owned company. Investors don't see their money back and then they pull out of skateboarding. They think skateboarding's, you know, not a good investment. But if your heart's in it and you build something from the ground up and build it and hire other skaters and do things right, then it's gonna be, you know, something that has legs. Who decides who's gonna be pro? At this point, it's usually the board brands. If there's enough people that are clamoring over a particular person to have a pro model, someone will give that guy a, a pro model and he will be constituted as a pro. It really comes down to if people are asking for your board, you gotta make it. There's a certain amount of coverage and exposure that you need to get in order to turn pro. The board brands generally have been the gatekeepers to someone having a career. A lot of times the shoe company will want to weigh in on when the guy turns pro, but I still feel like the, the board companies in this business, they're what you identify with. You know, each, each professional skateboarder is identified with their board brand first. I don't think anyone really controls skateboarding. I mean, I think the leaders in skateboarding, the pros, I think that they're leading the way. To tell you the truth, dude, I think we have the power. I think skateboarding controls skateboarding still. Traditional sports, you have lockouts and union strikes and labor arguments and this kind of thing. But these things always sort themselves out. Skaters have an influence and a control and the final word to a point. But I think in other ways, the transaction has already taken place. You know, honestly, I think the consumer controls skateboarding. The person that has the power is the guy that goes, I'm going to spend this dollar or this five dollars, this fifty dollars on the thing that you make. People entering the skateboard world, business people, from a different place, a different motivation. As it evolves, more and more people with those motivations will be major players in what's happening. The guy on the other side, going like this, the further down the road it goes, he gets weeded out. What's uninteresting to me about standing on the sidelines like this is standing on the sidelines. My way of thinking is either get out of the way or participate. You know, even with the big companies coming in, they're getting all these skaters on and the skaters are still running the company. The skaters are still making the trends, making what's new, making it happen next. And as long as we keep doing it the way we want to do it, it's going to go good. Yeah.